Hello everyone, and welcome to Factorio. This is Otaku Showboat, and today I will be discussing Train Supply Manager. If you have been watching my tutorials on various mods thus far, please be sure to do all of the social and engagement stuff below the video. I do stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otaku showboat if you would like to go over to leave a follow there. And you can, of course, support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash otaku showboat if you are so inclined and able. Train Supply Manager, I talked a bit about how I use this in my Crastorio series fairly recently, I think episode 14, 15, somewhere along there. It's called Fuel Stop 1 as the video title on that because I go into some detail into the workings of Train Supply Manager, but I think that a discussion as to the mechanics of Train Supply Manager would be better fit into a completely separate video so that people can search for it and just reference back to it whenever they uh, need to find something out about this particular uh, management of trains mod. So, the first thing I should note about Train Supply Manager is that it is resource agnostic. That is, that is going to be the theme behind Train Supply Manager. It does not care what your trains have in them. So it doesn't need to know. You don't have to tell it. Not like Logistic Train Network, LTN, where all of the contents of all of the trains is known at basically all times, and you have a big performance impact because of that. This mod does not care. That is the number one most important thing to know about Train Supply Manager. So what is Train Supply Manager? How does it work? So Train Supply Manager works around the concept of having a supply and a request. Suppliers and requesters. The requesters will request from very specifically defined suppliers. Now, the way that I personally tend to use this is I have, as here in this supplying station, a train station, a standard train station, does not need to be a special supply station to actually load trains with whatever I want to load. This, if, for example, is just copper, just copper ore getting loaded through bulk rail loaders onto my trains. I have three trains right now in this playthrough that are loaded to the brim with copper ore, and I have told them to go to these stations. These are the supplier train stations. They all have the same name. Every supply station has the same name for this Depot. That is what I will refer to this setup as. This is a depot, and this line here being empty simply allows the train to go out and back in again. Because sometimes when you sometimes when you put a train down here and you set the uh, schedule on it, uh, it ends up doing a big loop when you turn it on to get back to the same train station it was just at. That's just a Factorio vanilla thing. I just need to have a way for it to get back uh, easily enough. So, we tell it to go to this supply station here, this this depot, uh, and that's, that's why I have named these D and the resource and the specific ID. This is my first depot for copper. For example, that's just my own personal naming convention here. This depot means nothing until it is defined. There's a little button called the TSM. It's over, it's over that way. The, the TSM GUI buttons. There's a button saying define supply sourcing 
priorities. The very basics of this is that you have to define a resource and ID to a depot. This is called the station list here, but this is basically the depots. It doesn't matter how many have the same name for the depot. As long as they have the same name, they will, they will count as a depot here. Uh, and in this case, our copper ore I have defined as the signal. Basically, the signal taken from the actual circuit network set of signals. The signal of copper, copper. These are irrelevant, uh, sp what you specifically pick here. I could define something that has a signal of Z, Z, and apply it to copper and to coal and to iron and to stone and to whatever else I want and save that. And the way that would work is that if I have a requester station that requests from ZZ signals, it will first pull from copper trains. And then if there are no copper trains to pull from, it will go from coal. And if there are none from copper and coal available, it'll pull from iron and then from stone. It's just the order of priority in this list that it will that it will pull from. I don't need this, so I'm just going to uh, completely delete that priority. From our supplying, once you have defined this, this is the number one main thing that I tend to forget, and I think most people tend to forget to do, is actually setting your resource ID and station list. I prefer actually putting, having the actual resource picture as the resource and ID, just doubling it up. I prefer the pictures, having them so that I know at a glance what I have and what I don't have on my train network thus far. This makes things available to be requested. That's what this does. It makes it available. And as I sa have said, you can very, very easily just have this type of a train station be the spot where the stuff gets loaded. You, you can do that. You don't have to split it up like this. It, your train station here can just be a supply station and you can have it on its own unique name and it can be its own depot. But for the sake of being able to scale at a larger scale, just get more stuff, it's easier to have a separate uh, yard, depot, depot. Yard, depot, or waiting place and depot. From here, stuff needs to get requested. And in the current state of this particular base, I have one area where things are being requested. And it's a very, very good opportunity to also discuss how trains get refueled with Train Supply Manager. But first, we'll talk about train requests. So the requester train station well it's set up in a very similar way for the exception that it comes with this extra little piece that gets automatically placed called this train counter this little train counter gets added when you place down a uh, requester train stop uh, it's added by script I think uh, this train stop needs Ideally, to have a wire between a train requester and a train counter. You can actually place this train requester within a very specific radius around uh, the actual train stop. Uh, in this case, it is, this is my requester of coal at the fuel stop 1 uh, area. So, at this generalized area that is my fuel stop, my first fuel stop, I have requested coal. So that's my that my own personal naming convention for this. Requester stations, every single requester station needs to have its own unique name. Every single one needs to be unique. And the uh, train supply manager will iterate names for you. If uh, you copy and paste a requester train stop and it has the same name as an existing train stop, it will 
start appending numbers onto the end to make it a unique name for you. Uh, and you will get a little pop-up message saying that it's been renamed uh, anytime that happens. Now, you have some control over this uh, request. You have, you have actually a lot of control. About as much control as you're willing to put effort into it. Um, but the very, very basic thing is that you always need a light. A train requester lamp. You, will, you always need that because it's the train requester lamp that gives you the resource and ID uh, options on it. So when you place down a lamp, you'll have at, at first these being blank. You can then put in, you just have to go and match the icons for what the defined source priority is that you would prefer. It would be nice if this was like a drop down of your available resource and IDs, but I get, I get the limitations on being able to do that. I, I understand. I just, it, it would be nice to have this just be a list of already defined source priorities because you can't, you can't request a resource and ID pair that doesn't exist. It, it won't work initially because there's nothing to request from. It'll let you do it. It'll, it'll let you change to the other thing as I, as I close these GUIs. It'll, it'll let you change to something else that doesn't exist and it'll say not defined here. You have to pay very close attention, not defined. Uh, so it's ready for you if you ever do define it. That's, I guess, the, the benefit that you have here is you can, you can define a request for something that doesn't exist yet and then later on make it exist by defining it in here. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and, uh, and fix that, and now we uh, can start requesting our coal again. On the surface, uh, once you do that, you will start requesting trains. And you will not ever stop requesting trains. Uh, that's that's the other side of it. Uh, it'll it'll request trains from that depot. All of them. Forever. Regardless of how much you actually have here. So ideally, it would be nice to have a little bit more control over things, and that is why I have all of these wires here, all of these circuit wires. Now, I have two arithmetic combinators. There's various different ways of being able to use circuit networks in order to control how many trains are coming in at any given time and how much stuff you have at a very specific train stop. But the way that I tend to do it is I have these two combinators hooked up to my storage all of my storage on the request. So in this case, I use bulk rail loaders and unloaders. So I have the unloaders hooked up to the butt end of an arithmetic combinator here. And what it's saying in the logic here is that take the count of whatever is in here. That's, that's what each is in the circuit network uh, system in Factorio. Each just doesn't care what it is. As, I, as I've mentioned, TSM does not care what the items are. Whatever the items are that are in these warehouses, take that total value, divide it by 4,000, and put output that value as X. Output that value as X. Then we're going to send that signal of X into our next arithmetic combinator, and then we're going to take a constant value of 2 and subtract whatever whole number value of x ends up being. Note that you, there are no fractional values with uh, the Factorio circuit network. It only deals in whole, in whole numbers, not float numbers. Uh, so it does round uh, whatever that division is. It, it will round it. Uh, and then you're going to take this value of 2 minus x and output that signal as p 
We then connect that wire up to the train requester and have the train requester hooked up to the train counter so that the train requester is able to know the value of trains on the way, which is what this train counter outputs. It outputs a value on trains on the way. It's a special signal. It is a special signal uh, that is added with Train Supply Manager. Uh, and I'm taking a look in this case at, I am enabling this light. I am turning on the light, AKA I am adding trains to come here to this particular stop when the number of trains that are on their way is less than or equal to the output value of P, the value of P, in which you, you may be able to tell that P will never be greater than two. So as long as the number of trains is less than or equal to two, this thing will be on and bringing trains until we have two trains. Once we once we have two trains, then we are then we are equal, and we're still enabled. We're still enabled if we are equal to p. If we have if we have two trains and p is two, that's that's equal. We're still meeting this condition, so it will bring a third train. If we are if we are less than or equal to, if we are less than, it will only bring two trains. Because once once the second train is on the way, well, two is not less than two. It is equal to two, so this will turn off and stop bringing more trains. Hey, logic. 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 So when it's equal to, less than or equal to, it will bring one more than the value of P. And the value of P, as I have arbitrarily defined it here, is two. This is, this is arbitrary. This is just the number of trains that I want to bring, uh, thereabouts. And then if this is less than, it will be precisely that value of P uh, that I will end up with simultaneously, right? Just that's the number of simultaneous trains that we will be bringing in uh, to here. However, it's also the number of train loads that will be brought into this requester before it stops requesting more trains. Now, depending on your travel time on the trains, you are going to end up with more stuff in here than what you request. So in this case, technically I'm requesting two times 4,000 or 8,000 units of stuff. I have significantly more than that in here now just because a train holds a lot more than this and it has brought two trains full of coal so my value of x is really high it's value of nine right now and so p is negative seven and that's a really low value of of course if p is a negative value your trains on the way it's not going to be a negative value it's going to be zero and if it's if it's zero Zero is still greater than a negative value of P. Uh, and so we're not requesting stuff until P goes positive. Until, until P goes positive. Because do remember that if this is equals, if, if this is less than or equals, as this originally was, uh, honestly a mistake on my part for having it be equals, if P is zero and the trains on the way is zero, it's going to request a train at P equals zero. So I definitely actually want this to be a not equals to, a, a less than and not equal to uh, on that P, because then if P is zero and I have precisely 16,000 units of stuff, or 8,000 units of stuff, excuse me, between these two thingies, uh, then I won't request another train until... I have uh, even less than that uh, that's left. Uh, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. And that is the basic logic behind how to control the amount of stuff 
coming in on a train station. This value of 4,000 is arbitrary. You can have as much stuff brought in as you want in here that we're dividing uh, the contents by. Uh, and this value of 2 is arbitrary. It does not actually truly matter uh, in the end. Uh, it's your own personal preference. This is completely customizable. You don't have to use these exact numbers on here. It's just, this is the basic logic I tend to use here. It can get more complex. You may, for some reason, have trains that have a differing number of locomotives. You may have some trains that are 1-2, and you may have some trains that are something like 2-4. Or you may have trains that are 1-2-1. Uh, or 111, or any of the that type of train, the 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 double-sided trains. A lot of people say double-headed. That's not accurate. It's uh, double two-sided trains, one on each end. With those, it's a bit different. I would suggest that you have a look at the documentation on the train supply manager mod page for those more advanced types of scenarios. Uh, it is, by its own admission, outdated, but a lot of the logic has not changed at all. Uh, so do keep that in mind, and I'm sure there's various other resources, uh, like on the forums and such, of people asking questions about how to do various circuit network stuff. This is not really supposed to be a circuit network video, this is just me explaining some of the logic behind how Train Supply Manager works and how I tend to use it. How I tend to use it with some rudimentary circuit logic uh, to control what's coming in. So this particular station is bringing me coal from my Coal Depot 1 to this specific fuel stop for as long as the value of P, so, so long as the number of trains that are on their way is less than the value of P, which is the amount of stuff divided by 4K, and then it's 2 minus the stuff divided by 4,000, the whole number of how much stuff divided by 4,000. As I said, Train Supply Manager doesn't actually care what's in these things. I could very easily put a train of copper, and I could assign a train full of copper to that Coal Depot 1, and it will very happily just request that train of copper if I make that mistake. Uh, it does not care. It does not check what's inside of the wagons, uh, so just be sure you are assigning your trains to the proper depots. You can get a little bit screwed if you are copying and pasting depots, uh, because you need to pay very, very close attention to the names, to the names on these. If I go in to copy this, Make sure you turn off train station names if you're going to be using this for some other resource. You need to change these names between depots, but because Train Supply Manager needs to have these having the same name, uh, it doesn't change the names for you. So that's one very key thing. Key mistake that tends to happen uh, with me is both the regular station and the depot end up having the same name as existing sets and occasionally I get trains that try to come into this area to this new area that I'm in the middle of building that's going to be for something completely different and then I've got a train sitting here and I have to go in rename rename the depot rename the station send the train back to where it's supposed to go uh, manually so the last topic for the day today for Train Supply Manager is fuel stops. By default, Train Supply Manager in its mod settings 
uh, under, I think it's, yeah, it's under these startup settings. The fuel stop name is fuel stop. Uh, you can define this to be whatever you want it to be. So by default here, it's fuel stop. The thing that's not mentioned here uh, in this setting is the one above it. Pay very close attention to this one above it. If set, the number of locomotives will be included in the fuel stop name default. Otherwise, all trains will use the same fuel stop. This is a very important setting, uh, and it's on by default. It, it is on by default. What this means is that if you do have trains that are mixed uh, in terms of the number of locomotives per train, and th this allows you to send your trains to different fuel stops, because obviously if you have a train that has two locomotives uh, on it, you're going to need some additional inserters to fuel those trains up, ideally. Ideally, you're going to have fuel in both of your locomotives uh, at the head of your train. Uh, some have a locomotive at the head and the tail, so you do need to take that into consideration. Again, refer to documentation uh, on how to handle those types of setups. Now, I apparently just got a message through whatever Discord. I Fine. Now, fuel stops. Fuel stops, by default, you have to have this specific name with this very specific capitalization plus the number of locomotives at the, at the head, essentially. I, I, I don't think in this case it actually cares about if you have a locomotive at the tail, uh, as, long, as long as it's matching either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 20. It, it, should be, it should be fine, uh, just whatever the number is. So this very specific name here on this standard train station, I'll add this standard train station, is fuel stop 1, as in every locomotive, or at every train with one locomotive, is a, there's a difference between locomotive and train, uh, everything that has one locomotive will come here. If I have a locomotive on my lines that has, or if I have a train on my lines that has two locomotives together, it will not ever go to this train stop. It will want to, by default, go to a fuel stop two. So keep in mind, if you're using two four trains or any variation thereof of more than one, you'll have to name your fuel stops fuel stop two or whatever number of locomotives on your trains. Just that's that's the very key concept there. Unless you turn that check mark off in the startup settings, in which case then you have to name your fuel stops without the number and all of your trains will go to those respective fuel stops and then it is up to you how you want to handle any different trains you may have. I personally do not ever do mixed types of trains. I only ever build with one specific type of tr uh, train, one layout for trains, and that is the 1-2 layout. That's how I do it, but various people have various preferences, and that is how you would uh, have le some level of control over the fuel stop mechanic. So. When do trains get fueled? When do they want to fuel? Well, under your map settings for Train Supply Manager, you can define a minimum refueling amount. By default, this is like 2025-ish on the value here. This value is extremely deceptive. It is extremely deceptive. I will admit that I do not actually know what this value actually is in terms of units and what it refers to. What I do know is that how Train Supply Manager calculates the ultimate value that the train will use uh, and check against 
for its internal fuel value versus the minimum required before the train supply manager tax on the train stop to refuel, uh, is that it takes whatever value is input here, multiplies that by the maximum consumption of the train. Uh, so in the case of Crastorio, it modifies the base trains to have a consumption of 2 megawatts, uh, and it's cons that consume fuel value on the tooltip there of uh, of 2 two megawatts. I think by default in vanilla, that's like 600 kilowatts or something. Uh, it gets multiplied by that value, and then it gets multiplied by a constant of 800. So whatever whatever you define here... It's always going to get multiplied by a value of 800, and then it's going to be multiplied by the value of the cons max consumption on the train. And then it's going to be divided by the train's effectivity, which is the efficiency of the train. I don't know off the top of my head what the efficiency is of a vanilla train. I'm assuming it's 1, so it doesn't really change things. I don't know what units uh, the formula uses for this minimum refueling amount, uh, what the what the units are used uh, are being used in the uh, in the max consumption specifically. I know that this whatever this value is gets multiplied by eight hundred, as well as by the max consumption of the locomotive in in question. Uh, I I just don't know if it's in watts, kilowatts, or megawatts. I'm I'm thinking it's probably kilowatts, but I, I haven't done enough testing to find out. I'm sure you can go and do more advanced looking up and testing yourself to see how that actually goes into play. So just know, the, the whole takeaway here on this minimum refueling amount is the value that you put in is not the value in megajoules, kilojoules, whatever you think it might be. Uh, that the train will begin to refuel at. It is it is not the same thing. Uh, this value gets adjusted. This is this is basically a multiplier. That's actually what this is. That's a better way of describing what this value is. This value is a multiplier to the minimum refueling amount. So in this case, I've set to 100. It's more than a full stack of coal, less than the full amount the train can hold. Uh, in Crastorio 2, your mileage will vary. Uh, so basically, don't put this as some astronomically high value, uh, because then your trains are all going to want to go to the fuel stop all the time. Forever. It's basically just permanently added the fuel stop onto their station list. You may want that. You may always want your train to go and refuel after doing a uh, delivery. You may, you may want that. Or you may not. You may want it to only get refueled when it needs more fuel. Just as long as this value is sufficiently high enough for the train to get to a train stop from its delivery requester station. Because the way that this works, it tacks on the fuel stop at the very end of the... Uh, of the... Of the whatever this get this is called schedule that's the word yes that's the word it, it tacks it onto the end of the schedule which means that depending on where it is when the fuel stop gets added this fuel stop can end up after a request station so you need to make sure that you have fuel stops close to distant requesters as well as near the sources so that you limit the amount of fuel that you actually need to use to get to a fuel stop that's that is my personal recommendation as i manually send this train and this train to the fuel stops just uh just so that they can get some more fuel because they are requesting it I don't think they actually need it, though, that I was testing around with uh, with that particular setting. As as you can see, this thing is full 
of of co of coal already, and that's uh, just a previous setting uh, of a really high value, like 400 on that uh, setting map setting on the fuel amount. So yeah, it's a, it's a little bit misleading that setting for train supply manager just want to make sure everyone knows that it's not actually a, a fuel value that you're putting in there it's just some multiplier to fuel value uh, that you're putting in uh, on there and as you can see we no longer have the fuel stop requests here after I had made some changes so that is train supply manager in a nutshell as one goes along and keeps adding in uh, requesters and adds in more depots depending on like what type of a mod suite you're using if you're using a overhaul mod suite uh, the list of supply source priorities can start getting really long and also there is this request priorities you are absolutely able, I'll, I'll leave it at this one, this very final tip, you are absolutely able to change request uh, stations, requ request IDs remotely. You don't need to be near a requester station to change what the train requester is requesting. You, it, you can just be wherever you want and put in stuff through doing this with the uh with the show requester gui show requester gui is very 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 nice it's very very nice it'll tell you if something's not defined it'll tell you the name of the stops i think those are somewhere up in here yeah these 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 guys that are eventually going to be requesting the iron so i could like go in and be like hey uh you are going to request iron ore I apparently just had a train path for a thousand tiles or longer. Great, great. This GUI that will update after you close and open it again. And then the next thing is going to be requesting coal uh, for an iron smelting setup over here. So now we have these two requester stations. I can actually, you can change the names of those stations remotely at any time. So I could change it. Uh, this one is the iron one, so it's request iron at smelting at iron smelting one, and there we go. And this one's requesting coal at iron smelting one, and there we go. Uh, this is bringing in from coal. What happened here? Ah, right. I'm I am still in need of placing down a whole bunch of signals on that specific line so stuff's gonna sit there i'm going to be reloading the save anyway so it won't matter uh, in the end anyway with all of that and showing the an example of how all of this here works i would like to thank you all for watching this has been otaku showboat if you have enjoyed this video please be sure to do all of the social and engagement stuff down below. I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash showboat if you would like to leave a follow over there. Uh, and you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash showboat if you are so inclined and able. I will see you all on the next one.